Good morning. We're going to continue John's Gospel today. Very excited to be amongst you. We'll be here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we'll take Thursday and Friday off. Um, we are shooting through John's Gospel, and super excited to be spending time with you. Got a little puppy over there, sleeping. There he is. Everybody say hello to the 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 rock star. It is a um, fall day in uh, in Louisiana. Looks like it's uh, about um, 57 degrees. So, very excited to be in your midst. Uh, got a couple of things I need to... Hello, friends. Good to see you all. Steve, thanks for your uh, your email. I think Wikipedia led one of us astray. I don't know. We'll find out. But uh, I appreciate your uh, I appreciate your email. Uh, and away we go. Oh, we got somebody. Um, the dog is certain that someone is here that he must slay. All right. Listen to him growling. Oh, wow. He's, he's grabbing it. Listen to him. Oh, that's enough. That's enough, buddy. That's enough. Uh, 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 uh. Come on. So let's get to uh, John. You want to go to myht.higherthings.org for the... Uh, for the live stream with us, if you're not, you can join us on Facebook. But um, um, that's the um, that's the uh, that's the fun. All right, let's take a look. We're in John chapter 18. Fridays are great because I had a page back to where we where we stopped last, and here we go. <clears throat> Jesus is on trial and he was left in the possession of um, left hot potato from Annas uh, to Caiaphas finally Annas is the father-in-law and um, Caiaphas is the, the current high priest Now, Simon Peter was standing warming himself. Still, we left Peter, and he had just denied Jesus to a, um, it's No Mercy Monday. Oh, that's great. I better have my A game on on this, which is supposed to be my day off. Um, Simon Peter's warming himself still by the fire. So it's like a cut scene. We go back to, uh, we go back to, to, to Peter by the, by the fire. And so they said um, to him, May Kai, um, aren't you um, also out of his disciples? And he said, Uk Amy, I am not. Second denial, same thing. Um, again, oh, Colonel Davis is in the house. Um, Good boy. All right. So, um, first denial was to a slave girl. Second denial is to the, st the crowd standing by. One of the servants of the high priest, um, a relative of, of the man who Peter cut off his ear. That's So, Malchus's second cousin on his mother's side. Uk ego. Um, did, did, didn't I see you? Did I not see you? Um, in the, in the capo, in the, in the garden with you, with, with him. And again, uh, Peter denied it and said, um, and at once the rooster crowed. So, um, uh, yeah, Uk Amy is, is, is really sort of, uh, and Pastor Rake is right is really sort of abrupt. Um, in another gospel, he calls down curses on the third denial. 
Um, what do you do if the denials don't match? The denials do match. Um, because I imagine that he's denying it to anybody who will, um, who will, who will say anything to him. But the third denial, he literally calls down curses. So he's like, bleepity bleep, beep, beep, beep. Uh, I'm not the guy. I, I don't know the man. Um, oh, Will. Good to see you. Danger. Will Robinson. Danger Robinson family. All right. So the rooster crowed, just as Jesus said. Just as Jesus said. And the text doesn't have to say, the text doesn't have to remind us that this happened because we know. We know. We know that Jesus said, look, but I will follow you to prison and a death. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, before the rooster crows three times, you're going to deny me. Uh, but before the rooster crows, you'll deny me three times. Don't get wrapped up in, well, was it to a slave girl the third time, or was it, was it to, was it to one of the relatives? Look, there's a crowd, and the crowd sees him, and the crowds, um, points him out, picks him out of the lineup. And the crowd all says, aren't you the guy? And, and, and he would not be numbered with sinners. <laughs> Jesus would be numbered with Peter, but Peter would not be numbered with Jesus. That's what happens in verse 27. Think about that. Jesus will be numbered with you. There's never a point in which Jesus like is like, um, rake is too bad of a person. I don't want to be numbered with him. There's never a part where he does it. Instead, Jesus counts himself as a, as, as counts himself with rake. He counts himself. And, and, and for rake, you too, for you, for, uh, numbered with sinners, counted on the sinners team. He takes on the, the, the sinner team to redeem the sinner team. But when, Push comes to sub in the in the in the courtyard of the high priest. Peter wants nothing to do with him. And look. Don't do the thing where you think you you deceive yourself and act like you wouldn't be doing the same. Because to be connected to Jesus on this night, the night in which he was betrayed, is is to die with Jesus. And he won't have any of that. You don't need to die for him. He's got it. He's going to die for you. He's going to die for you. So th there's none of this. There's none of this. How special you are that if you were in the garden with Jesus, you would not. Um, uh, you would not deny him. Oh man, it wouldn't take a little girl for you to deny him. You deny him anyway. You do it daily. You do it much. Just look at your life. It's like it wouldn't take 30 pieces of silver for you to be denied, for you to betray Jesus. You do it for far less. And you do it daily, and you do it much. And I do too. That's called sin. Well, I mean, not betray Jesus. Really? Because that's what we do daily and much. Every single day. So you're saying we could just sin. I'm going to say you just do that anyway. That's what you do as a sinner. And what he does is save you. Now, his enlivening word, enlivening gifts, enliven you to live not for yourself, but for others. But who gets the credit for that? See, when we, when we, when we do the thing where we're all excited that sanctification is about us, now I finally get to do something. We miss the point entirely that sanctification is Christ in action in your life. That Christ, it's Christ living through you for others. It's, it's Jesus take the wheel. You driving, you're going to run the thing in the ditch. You're going to kill you and kill others. But you are not driving. Jesus has got this. That's the way of the wise virgins. Oh, my friend Terry Lynn's here. Good to see you, Terry Lynn. Um, oh, 
Oh, Mark, what an interesting comment. Dying for him will come sure enough, but later. In the waters of your baptism. After he's died for you. Then they led Jesus away from the house of Caiaphas to the, hmm, I believe, um, so they led Jesus away from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. Uh, the Praetorium is, um, uh, they translate it here as the governor's headquarters. It's the governor's official residence. Um, the governor's palace, um, the White House, the governor's mansion. Um, I mean, it's nice. Uh, it, it, now it's early morning. They themselves did not go into the praetorium because um, they would they 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 would be. They would be defiled. But they wanted to eat the Passover. Do you understand this? Do you see this for how evil it truly is? We can't go in there because if we go in there, we can't eat the Passover. That'll defile us. You're trying to murder him. You're trying to kill him. I can't go in there. If we go in there, we'll get defiled. You're trying to kill Jesus. I mean, come on. I mean, that's no big deal, right? But if we go in there, we'll get defiled. That's man's religion. This is acting righteous while you do evil. <laughs> Rick's got a four-page letter, Rayleigh, about how I said it was okay to betray Jesus. I didn't! Uh, that's a true friend. Um, uh, this is man's religion. We're going to worship God on Sunday and fornicate on Sunday night. This is this is true religion. This is what religion looks like. We're going we're going to, we're going to be in church and get points for being in church, and oh how great it is that we're being in church. Um, um, but we're going to hate our neighbor. We're going to hate our neighbor, and then we'll complain that our neighbor did something wrong. This is religion. This is what religion looks like. And if it's disgusting to you, it's the way you roll. That's the way you roll. So you see the Pharisees in all of their, they're going to murder Jesus. And they're most concerned that they get to eat the Passover. Well, the good news here is that he's the Passover lamb. They're not going to miss supper at all because he's going to be, be slain at twilight for them, despite them in their place. Oh, I love it. Don't you love it? I love it. Let's get back to the text. So Pilate went outside to them. You see, he goes to them. This is the way God goes. God goes to us. Pilate has to go to sinners. The murderers. So Pilate has to go to the murderers. And in the same way, they have to go to sinners. God has to go to sinners. I mean, this is an in this is an an icky parallel. Oh, that's uh, uh Mark's making a um uh, Mardi Gras thing. Yeah, Shrove Tuesday versus Mardi Gras. That's a that's a discussion to have, which is. You know, Shrove Tuesday is a day of repentance where you're solemnly mourning and preparing for the fast. Mardi Gras is that you party until midnight and then and then you repent. Um, if I were looking for Jesus to return, I would expect him 
on Shrove Tuesday at, um, on Mardi Gras and not on um, not on Ash Wednesday. If I were guessing, but only God knows. What is that hideous pullover you're wearing? An avocado peeling. You, you know, you, you know, Ray, I'm not going to take fashion style from you, buddy. I'm just cold, man. And it was in the closet and I could fit in clothes that I used to not be able to wear before. So um, I'm just I'm just happy to be here. Um, um, so Pilot goes outside to them. Uh, what kind of charge do you bring against this man? What kind of charge do you bring against this man? It's no mercy Monday. So if you were on trial, okay, um, let's, let's say, um, and Sandra's throwing shade about my sweater too. Well, that's awesome. Um, let's say, let's say that, um, I'm going to pick on Bobby Joe. Let's say that Bobby Joe was on trial and Bobby Joe gets her lawyer and she gets her, she gets her, um, um, uh, she gets her, she gets her defense attorneys. Um, she gets her defense attorneys and she's, and she's there and she's, um, and she's, and she's, and she's before the court and the judge says, um, um, what's the, oh, okay. Sandra wasn't throwing shade. She like, actually likes the green. So, um, and, and so it's time for them to tell you what the charge is. And, and they say this, okay. Um, if this guy wasn't doing cocoon evil, we wouldn't have handed him over to you. That's the charge. That's the charge. The charge is if, if if he wasn't doing evil, we wouldn't have brought him in for trial. That's the charge. Just take that in for a second. The charge is uh, if he weren't doing evil, we wouldn't have brought it here. If this thing isn't rigged like you like you can't believe this is this is as um um oh wow. This is as rigged as a New Orleans election. Um, since uh, my, my, my grandpa died in, um, in uh, 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 I think he died in 1990. Uh, since my grandpa died, he's been voting in the state of Louisiana. No doubt. And voting the opposite of the way he, he would have voted when he was alive. Um, this is rigged. This is rigged. What's the charge? Well, if he wasn't guilty, we wouldn't have brought him to you. Really? That's spectacular. That's, that's spectacular. That's, that's magnificently wonderful. Yeah, that's, this is fair. Yeah, and you know, Rake's right. This is no mercy Monday, and the person who's not getting mercy is Jesus. For you. And Pilate sees through it. Wants nothing to do with it. Epen un autois. Uh, Pilate said to them, Labata, take him for yourselves. And Crinita, judge him by your laws. My 12 o'clock is here and Thor is ready to go. Um, now, now, Mark. Jesus saves Democrats too. I'll probably get a four-page letter on that, but I'm right. Apon Auto and the and the and the Jews said to him, We are not able to put anyone to death. I haven't got to 32 yet, man. Easy, Pastor Rake. 
Oh, you're getting it in there before I get there. Okay. Um, take him for yourselves and judge him by your laws. And their response is, is it's, we, we're not able, it's not lawful for us to put someone to death, which tells you what's going on. If this doesn't tell you what's going on, I don't know what else will. They want him dead. They want him in the ground. They want his family dead. This is, um, um, do you, do you remember, um, what was that show? Um, the Untouchables. I want his family dead. I want him in the ground. I want his, his, you know, it, it's, um, thanks for all the people who are standing up to the evils of Pastor Rake and defending my green sweater. I thank you so much. Yesterday, I forgot my, um, my collar. Um, so I get to church and I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot my collar. And, um, yeah, it was that high of a voice too. And so I, um, I, now I, I don't live next door anymore. It's about a, it's about a 10 minute to 15 minute drive to my house. And so I'm like, what am I going to do? And so I reached into my old collars and this, this bad voice is 17. I'm down another, uh, half a, uh, today the scale says I'm down a full 81 pounds. How's about them apples? And how am I going to celebrate it? I'm going to eat turkey and dressing on Thanksgiving with some pie. Um, they want to kill him. They've wanted to kill him all along since probably chapter two. They want to kill him because that's what we'll do to sinners. That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do to sinners. That's what we'll do to God. And I want you to I want you to think to yourself that um, um, I want you to think to yourself that um, <laughs> oh, Pastor Rake, I, I I don't know what to do with you sometimes. Um, but the uh, but but this is so important. This is so so important for you. Um, this is what they want to do. This is what you want to do. This is what we want to do to God. Don't miss this. This is what we do. This is what we want to do. And this is what we'd like to do to God. If we could just get our hands on him, we would tell him how it is, how we're better and he's not, how we could run the show better than him. And if you don't think I'm right on this one, then I know that you uh, one time have said, um, uh, I know you one time said, if I were God, I would. Well, how are you going to get to God? Be God. Well, I'll kill God. That's how you get to be God. I've stalled enough. I don't think I know the answer to, to Rake's question. <laughs> so this isn't about a trial. This is about murder. They want to murder him. They don't have a charge. If he wasn't evil, we wouldn't have brought him to him. Or another way of looking at this is a best construction, and I'm still not stalling, but um, what I mean by that is when I was, um, I want you to think about this too. The um, It used to be that uh, when, when, when the pedophilia stuff came out with the Roman church, everybody was sort of in awe over the fact that the, the, the Roman bishops, they didn't seem responsive to the press and the like. It's like they didn't care what was being said about them. Um, and, and everybody was sort of like, how could you not have done this? And they were like, well, we handled it in, in, internally. And, and, the, and they were done with it. Because when you don't answer to anyone, when you don't expect to answer to anyone, you... You don't have to make a reasonable argument. And and the, the Pharisees, they don't answer to anyone. It's beneath them to have to go to this Gentile's house uh, in the middle of the uh, the early morning in order to, to make a case that, they, that Jesus needs to die. They just want to kill him. So, so um, they're not used to making arguments, and so the arguments they make is awful. If he wasn't evil, we wouldn't have brought him to him because we're holy, and he must not be because we don't like him. 
Um, we do this with each other when we judge people based upon the letters after their name, R or D, blue or red. Take people's arguments. Don't take people's um, for them. That's a better construction on what was going on there. And now the question that I don't know. Oh, oh, I do know the answer to this. Um, this was to fulfill what Jesus had spoken um, to show by what kind of death he was going to die. Um, so this is teed up. This is teed up that he would be crucified. He says it in 12. I think he says it in uh, later on when, when, when I am lifted up, I will drag all men to myself. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. That's 3 and uh, 12. It's all over John's Gospel where he says, implies, what kind of death he was going to die. With the Jews, the Jews respond, the Christ is supposed to live forever and you, you're going to say that he's lifted up? They knew what he was talking about too. This has been working ever since before there was a world to bring about this death for you bronze serpent, is that he would be crucified rather than stoned. And this was suggested directly in the statement would be lifted up. Yes, sir, Pastor Rake. That's exactly right. You answered your own question while I was stalling. Um, um, I thought that this was some sort of, um, I just quickly glanced after you read the question rather than in Bible class, your pastor sometimes, when you raise your hand, you think that you, um, this is, I want to tell you a secret. You think that when you raise your hand that you're going to say something stupid. When you raise your hand, your pastor is actually thinking that you're going to say something hard. All right? And so if you say something stupid, don't worry. I thank God for it. When you say something hard, I'm like, it's like, uh, it's like the Muppets. Moving right along. Um, you know what I mean? So, like, never fear asking a question in Bible class because you think you're going to say something stupid. But in actuality, your pastor is praying for you to say something that he can answer. So that the comfort of troubled consciences may occur. All right. I can't continue this section. We'll because I can't get I, I won't get for far enough in it. Um, we're gonna have to bring No Mercy Monday to an end. Um, I want to invite you to go to uh, store.higherthings.org and sample the merchandise. I think that, I think there should be some sort of, um, you know, I think there should be some sort of Black Cyber Monday scale su sale. I, I, I don't know. I'm just the president, but if I were, if I, I would, I would guess there would be some sort of Cyber Monday sale for us or, or Black Friday sale. But either way, don't wait to Giving Tuesday to give to Higher Things. If you love what we're doing, if you love us passing on the faith to the next generation, if you if you're an Emmanuel member and you love that pastors able to do a Bible study every day, well, they're able to they make it happen. So give today. Um, that's higherthings.org/giving for um, uh, a tax deductible gift to Higher Things, or you can go to store.higherthings.org and um, buy some merch. Either way, you're helping out a great little organization. Um, at a great time. All right, tomorrow we will continue chapter 18. Remember, we have tomorrow and Wednesday, no Friday. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to Black Friday shop like you. No, I'm not going to Black Friday shop. I'm going to sleep on Black Friday. Um, have a blessed day. You too, Pat. You too, Terry. You guys have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Same bat time. Uh, same HT time. Same HT. Oh, there's my, my little buddy, Tyler. Same HT time, same HT channel. Have a blessed day.